My friends, it's hard to do a vlog when you're not in a good frame of mind. I'll tell you what's got me aggravated right after this. Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Wednesday, March 22nd. So what's got me in a bad frame of mind? Well, there's two things. First of all, how's your US mail? Ours absolutely sucks canal water. It's pitiful. If they came Saturday, they haven't come since Saturday. So Monday, Tuesday, and now it's Wednesday. I've got orders sitting in the mailbox that came in on Friday afternoon that still haven't gone out. So my wife's gonna make a special trip to town, 40 mile round trip just to put the things in the post office. It's pitiful. It's just absolutely pitiful. That's really the first thing that's aggravating the heck out of me. The second thing is I buy tons of things from Amazon. I ordered a new smartphone because the one I have has just been giving me fits for the last four or five months and I've just been putting up with it. And finally, I just can't take it anymore. Right at the moment when I need it the most, it'll reboot on me and you know, <laughs> it's just so frustrating. So I ordered the new smartphone, and of course I ordered a high upgrade. It's a Google Pixel 7 Pro with a lot of memory and all that kind of good stuff to help me shoot videos, etc. And guess what? They charged me twice. Now I realize they do this. They they you know put a temporary debit out there. Keep in mind this is an expensive phone. So $853 they put a temporary debit to hold the place. Well, then they shipped it and then they put the permanent debit but they never removed the temporary debit. So I've been charged twice for this stupid phone. I've gone out on the orders and made sure I didn't do something dumb like order it twice or something and it only shows one phone coming and yet I've been charged twice. So that's $1,700 that they've got and uh, they should only have half of that. Well, you think, well, just report it, right? Well, that's real easy. You ought to try that sometime if you haven't tried it. Anyway, so I go to PayPal, look in there. You know, it shows both debits there. So I try to report it. It says, just go to the resolution center, then click on report a problem. Yeah, try that. Well, when I first tried that, all it did was loop me to where I started, loop me where I started. I did that like five, six times and it never did change. It just kept looping me back to, where, to the start point. So today I thought, well, I'll try a different approach. So I go to the actual transaction, the, the temporary debit, and I think, you know, resolution center. So I click on that. So what's that do? You get so far into it and then it says, you can't report a problem on this kind of transaction. Since it's a temporary debit, you can't report a problem on that. Even though it's been there for a week now, a temporary debit and the actual debit has been charged. So why is it you can't report that? <laughs> so I go to the actual charge and I think, well, I'll try reporting it on the actual charge then and they don't give you another category or they don't give you any place to make any explanation. It's all bot oriented. In other words, you can only check these boxes. Well, there are no boxes to check on anything related to my problem. I mean like none. So you think, well, I'll just click this and go on with it. And you try that and then eventually you get to the point where you can't click because they don't make sense. What a frustrating bunch of crap. So it's really hard to put out a vlog when you're so frustrated. All right, I'll leave that behind and we'll move on to what's going on. I did spend a lot of time yesterday afternoon working on the plans for the thickness sander and they're turning out really, really good. Today, I should be able to finish it up, I think. And today, what I'm basically going to be doing is trying to package it up into PDF files that can be purchased and downloaded and then you can print them out. For the record, I've kind of duplicated everything. What I did was I gave you one picture clean of the of the machine and all the parts and everything, you know, with no no writing on it at all, and then the exact same picture with 
dimensions and everything that kind of busies it up. So that way you can look at one and look at the other and make sure you can tell what's going on. And then I numbered every part and then I have a long parts list and then the parts list has all kind of detail about that part and what you should do and what you shouldn't do, etc. and so forth. So I think it's going to be very good. Of course, the idea being that you'd have the ability to build this, that you have the proper tools, etc. So in other words, you'd have a metal lathe and a milling machine, etc. Now, for those of you who don't, I'm offering substitution suggestions on ways you could buy off-the-shelf parts, but quite honestly, I've never done that, so, you know, I'm going to put a disclaimer on there that you should, you know, be very good at fabricating if you try to go with this alternate solution. You know, you'll have to make your own decisions on a lot of things if you go that route. That if you're good at fabricating and good at putting things together and mechanical ideas, you should be able to build one that would be satisfactory. Hopefully that'll be uh, packaged up yet today and hopefully I'll even get it out on the website today, but I kind of doubt that because I'm still way behind on paperwork and emails and phone calls and etc and so forth. I'm not going to get to work on the violin again because the strings are not here yet. I don't expect the strings before Friday probably. If then, hopefully I'll get them by then. My friends, I'm going to interject a little footage that I took yesterday while completing that little honeydew project for my wife. This is the one where I had to drill the hole through the perpendicular ring. I have a honeydew project today and this is a steel ring that I have chucked up in this vise and I'm going to have to drill a hole perpendicular to the diameter. So I've got it in here and I've got a little punch and that didn't hardly make a dent. Well, let's see if it'll make a dent this time. Try it again. Better. I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm centered, so I'm going to try to move it over. Well, that's a pretty good indentation there. Hopefully that will suffice. Now we'll take it over to the drill press and get started drilling. Well, as you can see, I made it to the drill press. I've got a drill bit chucked up in there. It's uh, 1 64th smaller than an eighth inch, which is 7 64th. For my millimeter friends, I'll just say it's small. <laughs> anyway, I've got this ready to drill, so let's see what happens here. side. Well, I was afraid that might happen. This is pretty hard stuff, I think. And when I punched it, the punch didn't hit dead center, so it, it's causing the bit to slide off. So I think I'm going to take this into the grinder and just grind a little flat spot on this, and then we'll try again. Well, I've ground a flat spot on there. Hopefully you can see that. Well, it didn't turn the camera on, but I did center punch this. I'm sorry. I but anyway, it is center punched right dead center there, or as close to it as I can get. And let's see if it works this time. Houston, we have a hole. Well, that's honeydew project number one done. I will deburr the hole also for those of you who are machinists and know about that sort of thing. In other words, we'll get rid of the sharp edges. So I have the uh, poor man's deburring tool here. It's just a little half round needle file. And uh, I'll just get in there and hit it around that hole. And that seems perfectly fine. And then I'll go on the top side and do something similar. Just kind of rub it around there. And then just for grins, I'll even put it down in the hole and twist it a little bit there. And maybe, maybe even on this side, I'll try to get it down in there just, just to make sure it's not going to cut the string. I think she's planning to put a string through this. So there you go. That's Honeydew Project number one. Well, hope you enjoyed just seeing how I did that. It turned out to not be too difficult. Now the other project she had drilling the holes in the fire ring, which I really thought would be a piece of cake, turned out to be just another frustrating nightmare type thing. 
ended up going to the store to try to buy a better bit. The Milwaukee version of one of these step drills was over a hundred dollars and truthfully it was made in China so was it any better than the one I got from Harbor Freight? Probably not. So I didn't buy that. So I did buy some other things that I'm gonna try that were a little cheaper. It was around $50 worth of stuff. Just frustration all around. The only other news I have for today is Cash, the young man that I'm giving his lessons to, will be here this afternoon. Now last week we worked on timing issues, but they were slightly different types of timing issues. They were on singing and we worked on how to put special emphasis on certain phrases and certain words in the song. And again, that's all timing related and how you come across those words and how you say the phrase and get it out in time and etc. So there's, you know, we're really working on the fine details of timing at this point, which kind of amazes me that we're that far ahead and he's doing pretty darn well. During our last lesson, I tried to encourage him very strongly to get started on my mandolin lesson that I gave him. And I'm hoping that he has done that. And so hopefully we'll get started a little bit on that today too. And that would be really nice. The only other news I have for today is that uh, we did play at Dickie's Barbecue Pit last night and absolutely nobody showed up. <laughs> it was the lowest crowd we've ever had. We had uh, just uh, a few regulars, and I mean like a few, like a handful, and the rest of the restaurant was empty. I mean like, I guess it was due to the horrible weather. It was rainy, cold, you know, windy, all that. So I have a feeling that really held the crowd down. The sad news in all of that is that this hand decided it didn't want to play anymore. And at least half of the jam, I couldn't use this hand. I really couldn't just due to the pain. So I was, and that may have been due to the weather. I don't know, but I was just basically muting the strings and slapping time is pretty much all I did all evening. So that's the sad side of it, but uh, it could be much worse. I, you know, I still think my lucky stars that I'm as healthy as I am. If it wasn't for the arthritis and if I didn't have to look in a mirror, I think I was only 35. Unfortunately, that's not reality. I have to look in a mirror. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.